Hey guys, Middle Jesus here, and today we're going to take a look at my entire Nintendo Wii game collection. I have 170 games to show you, and that includes a bunch of the Wii classics, as well as some of the more kind of hard to find and obscure games, as well as some of the hidden gems. This is going to be really awesome. Let's take a look. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention that I'm going to go fairly quick. We have over 170 Wii games to show here, and I kind of want to group a lot of them together, maybe point out some of the highlights or some of the more interesting ones, starting with one of my favorite categories of Wii games, that is shooters, specifically on-rail shooters. The Wii had so many of these. And this is a category of games that we just don't see very often anymore. And that's what's so great about collecting for the Wii is that they got a lot of awesome ones, including Dead Space Extraction. This was a standalone on-rail shooter in the Dead Space universe that is frankly really good. This is a extremely well-made game. Uh, it doesn't play like an, a typical arcade on-rail shooter. Instead, it has a full story. It's got characters that you care about. It's a really cool game. Now, it did come out on the PlayStation 3, remastered, I believe. Uh, so if you have the PlayStation 3, you should definitely check it out there. We also got Sin and Punishment Star Successor on the Wii. Another one of my all-time favorite games. This is such a fantastic sequel to the N64 game. Beautiful graphics, really killer story, and honestly, there's just nothing quite like this game. Yes, it's an on-rail shooter, but you have full control over the character on the screen. You're dodging, you're doing melee attacks. There's a ton of variety in this game. Uh, it's amazing. I also want to talk about Ghost Squad on the Wii. Now, I believe this was an arcade game that got ported over to the Wii, and again, the the translation is just excellent. This is such a fun game. Uh, this is a typical arcade on-rail shooter and it's better for it. Um, just so much fun. Again, nothing bad to say about this. But the fun doesn't stop there. Oh no, there are even more on-rail shooters. Well, at least some of these are on-rail and some of these are probably considered like gallery shooters where you're shooting Poor defenseless animals, I know, but yeah, it's just it's just one of the things that the Wii did so well, you know, with the motion controls and aiming. It was just that perfect time when you could port over a lot of these games that you would normally have to go to the arcades to play. But if you had a Wii or a Wii U, well, this is a great genre of games to jump into. Again, you know, if you're going to keep a Wii for any reason whatsoever, it's probably because of the light gun shooters that are available for it. They're, they're just all fantastic. Another area that the Wii really excels in, almost better than any other system that you would collect for, that is the quote unquote hidden gems. Now, when I first started my YouTube channel, I covered Wii hidden gems at the time. It's one of the first series that I did because there were so many to cover. There's so many great games for the system. And that's really for just a couple of reasons. I mean, one, so many games were released for the Wii. It was so successful and so many developers jumped in. Plus they were willing to take chances on new ideas. This is something that we really don't see as much anymore, especially from big publishers. And on the Wii, it was kind of like one of those last generations where people were just willing to try stuff. I mean, it was really exciting. The other thing is, and some people may like it or may not, but of course the Wii controls, the motions, you know, the motion controls that they had for it, they lent themselves to developers trying new things. And some of them did, you know, better than others, but that led to a bunch of just really interesting game ideas. And you see a couple of them here. And if you're gonna collect for the Wii, this is one of the best parts of it, is just digging deep into the catalog and finding these hidden gems. Speaking of, one of my favorites is Lost in Shadow. This is by Hudson. And this is a, a game that you know could have came out on other systems, but I really love it here on the Wii. Uh, it, it, as you can see here, it's 
it, it seems to be kind of like a traditional platforming game, but what's going on here actually is that your character had his shadow ripped off his body and thrown off of this tower, and then you're controlling the shadow. And so you only exist in the background there. And this whole game deals with making sure that you are platforming on the shadows, plus you manipulate the environment to change the shadows, also sometimes the perspective. Uh, it's just a really cool and unique game on the Wii. I like it a lot. Another game I wanna highlight that gets overlooked sometimes is Klonoa. So this is the 2008 version that only came out on the Wii. Now what's great about this, I talk about Klonoa a lot in my videos because I like this series, but this particular one is a remake of the 1997 PlayStation game, Klonoa Door to Phantom Mile. So this is a complete remake, uh, reimagining of that old PS1 game on the Wii, and I think it's fantastic. You know, I just think that they nailed it. They basically just upgraded it. I mean, for the most part, this feels pretty much like that game. So again, if you are a fan of Klonoa and you have a Wii, man, you gotta check this game out. As well as some more hidden gems on the Wii. Again, games that I believe only came out on the Wii, and I've covered these extensively in previous videos. So I'll link to that up in the corner there if you wanna dive a little deeper into some of these, but uh, just again, a ton of variety on here. Um, you know, just a ton of different gameplay styles, some of them better than others, but you know, a lot of games that you would wanna dig into if you're looking for something new and different to play and you have a Wii, again, or a Wii U. I mentioned that because the Wii U does play Wii games, which is great because uh, a lot of this gameplay footage you're seeing here is actually captured on the Wii U uh, because it upgrades or upscales the video to HDMI. Very handy if you're doing YouTube or if you wanna stream. Some more games that I've covered here in the past, including Mad World, that is a black and white and red all over action beat em up game. Uh, then you also have Deadly Creatures, which is a game that get mentions an awful lot when people are talking about games that you, you should not miss on the Wii that were often overlooked, as well as Disney's Guilty Party. This is a, a whodunit party game that, um, uh, we used to play actually when we would go on vacation. Uh, one of the vacation rentals that we would uh, stay at had a Wii there and Guilty Party was one of the games that we would bring for that and it was a lot of fun. Here are some more games that I recommend you check out. And you know, again, I look at this and I'm like, wow, the variety on the Wii was just out of control. Now, to be fair, I think some of this looks like kind of shovelware, you know, that kind of, stuff that gets put out on a system when there are too many developers and too little quality control. But trust me though, there are a lot of games that are really fun to be found on the Wii in, a, you know, in every genre, whether you're looking for puzzle games or action games or platformers, you know, or even like uh, story driven hidden picture games. I mean, it's just everything that, <laughs> the Wii just had everything. Now, perhaps you didn't have a Wii back in the day or you're new to collecting for it. It's important to know that there are two versions of the Wii remote out there. Uh, you, see, you see it going on right here. So at the top right there is the original Wii remote. And then down below is the, the Motion Plus adapter. So basically what happened was that Nintendo released this adapter and then later incorporated it into the, the controller but this was an adapter that improved the motion controls and several games actually supported it or often required it. You see me showing Red Steel 2 here. This is a game that requires that motion plus adapter or controller. Uh, it does improve the controls quite a bit. Still probably not as accurate as you would like or perhaps something that you would get today but uh, just be aware that it's out there and some games actually will either take advantage of it or require it. There were a decent amount of survival horror games released on the Wii, some of them exclusive and others not, but a lot of them did take advantage of the Wii motion controls. You see Resident Evil 4 there, that is the Wii edition, and that's exactly what it does. So you can play through it, but use the, the Wii motion controls. Actually, it plays really well, some people, 
actually prefer this version over others of uh, Resident Evil 4. I'm not sure if I'm there yet or not, but I do think it's a really fun way to play the game. And here you have Cursed Mountain, which is a Wii exclusive game. This is a, again, a survival horror game. You are a, uh, a guy searching for his brother in the Himalayan mountains, trying to figure out what is going on, uh, what happened to him. And it's really weird and creepy. It's another game that uses motion controls where you have this third eye where you can do these attacks against ghosts. Um, yeah, a pretty cool game. It's not exactly triple A quality, but I think it's pretty neat. As you might expect, there were a bunch of first person shooters released on the Wii. The caveat being is that the Wii isn't very powerful, especially compared to the Xbox and the PlayStation. And while those consoles, you know, many of the first person shooters were showcases for great graphics on the Wii, you always got sort of a step down in quality. However, they almost always use the motion controls. Again, it felt very natural in a lot of these games to control and shoot that way. So that was the trade-off is that yes, you, you're not getting as nice of a you know looking game as you might on an Xbox or PlayStation, but the motion controls in some of these were pretty cool. Here are a bunch of Star Wars games that you could play, you know, on many different systems, whether it's the Wii or the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3. In general, though, I found that a lot of third party games that do that, that come out on multiple systems, playing on the Wii is not my favorite thing to do. Uh, some games are better than others when it comes to the motion controls, obviously, but in general, I. I tend to not like to play them on the Wii because I feel like the motion controls are kind of forced. An example being Tomb Raider Anniversary Edition here. Uh, this it, right on the cover there says exclusive Wii features. What that means is it has a bunch of motion controls tacked on that you have to use in this game and it drives me nuts because it's not better than using a normal controller. So that is one of the downsides to collecting for the Wii. Yes, a lot of the games that are built from the ground up to support motion controls on the Wii, I think play usually pretty well, but these third party ones, not so much. I don't know. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. You know, give me some examples of when it was better. Give me some examples where you just absolutely hate it. It's no surprise that because the Wii was so popular, there are a bunch of arcade collections, including Pinball Hall of Fame. You have a bunch of Williams pinball tables there the Dragon's Lair trilogy that includes Space Ace, one of my all-time favorites. You've got a Namco Museum Mega Mix there, Metal Slug Anthology, you've got a new version of Rampage, and then you have a bunch of shoot 'em ups Castle of Shikigami 3 is one of my favorites on the Wii. It's an excellent arcade game. As you can see here, it has full 3D graphics, which is beautiful. Uh, now, Japan did get a physical version of this on the Xbox 360 but that is very hard to come by. So actually the cheaper one to get is on the Wii. Um, yeah, definitely one of my highlights in the collection there. Now I don't have to tell you guys that of course I have a bunch of arcade racing games in my Wii collection. Love me some racing games and there are a bunch of them on the Wii. Some of them exclusive, some of them not. Um, the thing about the Wii, of course, just like some of the other games is that some of them try to use motion controls to varying degrees of success. Uh, as you might expect, some of my favorites are the ones that give you the option. And, uh, you know, some of these do that right here. I think probably the standout one in this list, well, there's actually two of them. It's Trackmania Build to Race. That's a great version of Trackmania. And then surprisingly, Speed Racer. That is a really fun game. But here are two of my favorite arcade racing games on the Wii. We'll start with Need for Speed Nitro. Now, EA did the right thing here. They didn't just try to port over a Need for Speed game from the Xbox or the PlayStation. Instead, what they did is they built this one from the ground up for the Wii, and it shows. This is such a fun game. It doesn't try to be anything like the other ones that you play on the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3. Instead, it feels like a game designed for the Wii and it's so much better for it. This is a really fun game. 
And then you have Excitebot's Trick Racing, another game that was designed specifically for the Wii, and it totally shows. Now, the one caveat is that you do use motion controls with Excitebots, and that's not going to be to everybody's taste, but I have to say that if you give it a couple minutes, you will get used to it. And what's nice about the game is that the levels are designed to, again, take advantage of that. It's not super frustrating. Yeah, you're going to have to mess around with it for a little bit, but trust me, the, the trick system, the level design, uh, the, the vehicles that you race in, it's pretty awesome. Here are some more Wii games that kind of fly under the radar a little bit, including Sky Captain, which is a game that plays very similar to, say, Pilot Wings, or maybe those Snoopy versus the Red Baron games that came out a couple years ago. Uh, it looks like a children's game, but it actually is really cool. You have two Boom Blocks games that Steven Spielberg was involved with, which seems a little odd to me, but I guess he's a hardcore gamer, which is cool. Uh, the Boom Block series are a bunch of puzzle games that rely heavily on physics, almost like Angry Birds before Angry Birds. Um, they're actually really fun. I know people are probably groaning because I compared it to Angry Birds, but trust me, it's actually really cool. Also, Marble Mania was a game I was obsessed with when I first started collecting for the Wii. I love Monkey Ball, and this is one of those games where you are tilting the environment as a marble rolls around the level, and there's a bunch of traps and jumps and all these little things that you have to avoid or manipulate. It's a really well-made game. Now, I know there are a lot of these kind of marble games, but this is one of the best ones ever made. Here are two first-person shooters that were created specifically for the Wii by Sega, uh, called The Conduit 1 and 2 here. And these were pretty interesting games at the time because I think it was really exciting to get a series created specifically for the Wii. Now, in my opinion, these are definitely inspired by Halo and some of the other games that were very popular at the time. And they mostly succeed they mostly succeed. I, I think the, the main complaint is they're just kind of generic. They're, they're not really anything special. But if you do like first-person shooters and you have a Wii, you should definitely check it out. Uh, now, you want to note that the second game is compatible with the Motion Plus. So it will perform a little bit better uh, if you have that, that controller. There were a bunch of RPGs released on the Wii. You see a bunch of them here, including Pandora's Tower. So Pandora's Tower is a Wii exclusive. And what's cool about this game is that your character falls in love with this girl and she is cursed to be turned into a monster. And in order to cure her of that, you have to battle through these 13 different towers. And I found this game to just have its own unique feel and vibe to it, even though maybe the graphics and maybe the gameplay doesn't quite look like it, but the way that the puzzles work, the way that the environments work, uh, there's a lot of nuance in this game. There are multiple endings. Uh, it's a pretty cool RPG and it's become somewhat collectible over the last couple of years. Now let's talk about two Sonic games that were, at least up until recently, they were Wii exclusives, but I'll get into that in a moment here. Starting with Sonic and the Secret Rings, a game that was not generally well received by Sonic fans when it was released. Kind of just a mediocre game, a uh, little bit of a disappointment, but that's okay because we got Sonic Colors, which is a game that I personally was really surprised by. I actually like Sonic Colors a lot. It does a lot of things right, including the level design with a bunch of variety. For instance, You'll be, you know, third person behind Sonic at a certain point, racing down this corridor at full speed, just barely in control, having a blast, but then it'll turn to like a side view, uh, almost kind of like classic Sonic style, and then it's playing that for a little while. You're bouncing around, kind of solving some of the environmental puzzles. Uh, also, the controls aren't too frustrating. They feel really good. Uh, the combat in this game feels really good. Overall, again, it's just a fun game. I will say though, it is difficult. So it is one of those Sonic games where, and like a lot of the Sonic games, where you're gonna have to learn the levels or you'll come to a stop every once in a while and be like, okay, wh what do I do now? Where do I go? Now I mentioned that Sonic Colors is no longer exclusive to the Wii and that's because as of the making of this video, it's been announced that they're gonna 
remaster it in HD for modern systems. So it's coming to the, the Switch, it's coming to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox Series X. So it's gonna be cool to play it on that system because again, I think it's a really great Sonic game. No More Heroes is a series that got to start on the Wii and made quite a splash at the time because these are, they're basically just beat em ups, but they have completely over the top characters, um, environments, the story is out of control. It's such a funny series of games. And what's cool about it is it does use motion controls, but it feels it feels pretty good. It's not perfect, but it does feel pretty good. It was designed again from the ground up to use those, so it's better than most. Here are some more Wii games that I like to play, including Trauma Center New Blood. So the Trauma Center series has been around for a while now, but this one is the first that's exclusive to the Wii. It's actually the third game in the series, but you don't have to have played all the previous ones. In this game, you play as two surgeons that are up in Alaska and working this trauma center, like the, the name suggests, and people come in, patients who have been shot or maybe they've been attacked by a bear or something like that, and then you go through the process of trying to fix them up. That includes sterilizing, uh, cutting them open, pulling bullets out or shards of bone or glass. It's very, very tense because it uses the motion controls and you have a certain amount of time before the patient just dies. And uh, it's a very stressful game, but it's also really fun. I also want to mention Knight's Journey of Dreams. So this was a total surprise when this was announced. This is a sequel to the classic Sega Saturn game, but of course it's exclusive to the Wii. And essentially in this game, you play a young boy or young girl that teams up with this creature Knights and you go into dreamland and then you essentially fly. If you've ever had a dream where you are flying, this is what this game is based on, where you're trying to collect these pellets and move through these different levels. Um, it's a very, <laughs> there's just no other game quite like it. It's so interesting. Uh, it's not gonna be for everybody. One thing I will say is that it does support motion controls, but you don't have to use them. So you can actually use a classic controller, which is what I prefer. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool game. And again, not a lot of people talk about it. And then here are some more random Wii games. Again, making the point that I was getting to earlier that there was just a ton of games released on the Wii. Yes, there was a lot of shovelware and you know, literally there are hundreds of games that you probably would never want to play, but there is a lot of creativity on this system. And you never know where that would show up, whether it be a licensed Godzilla game or perhaps a Back to the Future game. Now, Back to the Future did come out on other systems, but again, using the motion controls almost like a mouse worked really well. And so, yeah, that is why it's one of my favorite systems to collect for. Now, I would never go for a complete collection. I know a couple people who have complete collections and oh boy, that'd be pretty rough. You'd end up with a lot of stuff you would probably never want to play. But as a collector, I feel like my, my 170 games is feeling pretty solid. Now, of course, you can't forget to talk about the excellent Nintendo releases on the Wii. Thankfully, Nintendo really supported the Wii with pretty much every Nintendo franchise. So many great ones. I'm just showing a few of them here. Um, the couple that I really want to highlight, I think, is the Super Mario Galaxy series. That's where Nintendo decided to take the franchise in a completely new way, supporting a lot of that classic 3D Mario gameplay but adding motion controls that I feel like it worked really well. Now, I'm a huge fan of the Metroid series, and it's cool that the Metroid Prime Trilogy was well represented on the Wii, including the first two GameCube releases, as well as Metroid Prime 3, which was a Wii exclusive. Now, it's worth noting that the Metroid Prime Trilogy that you see here in that steel case is a little bit collectible on the Wii, uh, especially if you have a complete edition. Unfortunately, I don't. I'm missing that slip case, but if you're out and about and you see a copy of it and it's relatively inexpensive, you're probably gonna wanna pick it up. And then there's Metroid Other M, and that was another attempt at Nintendo to do something a bit new with their core franchises. And that one was met with mixed results. Some people love it, some people hate it. I think I kind of fall in the middle somewhere. I like the fact that they are spending more time 
getting to know Samus, getting to know her backstory and kind of what she's thinking. I thought that was pretty cool. But the third person platforming action stuff, I, I, I didn't like it as much as Prime. Let's put it that way. A couple Zelda games, of course. Doesn't every Nintendo console end up having a Zelda release on it? Probably. Uh, so you see Skyward Sword here, which is getting a nice HD remake on the Switch pretty soon, as well as two releases of Twilight Princess. Not entirely sure why I have both of these, but it does show the difference between the original release and also the Nintendo Selects version. I probably got one of those at a garage sale at some point. I am a huge Kirby fan, and the Wii got a couple excellent Kirby games, including Epic Yarn and Return to Dreamland. But it was the Kirby's Dream Collection that got a lot of people excited. I think when this was announced, it was a surprise to many of us, because I think that a lot of us feel that Nintendo kind of thinks of Kirby as a secondary series or secondary franchise of theirs. I don't know if that's true or not, but you know, it's never quite held up there at the same level as Mario. So it was really cool to see this collection where they've got a bunch of, well, they got the original Game Boy game, they got the NES games in there, uh, Super Nintendo games, as well as the N64 games. So that was a really cool collection. But Nintendo didn't stop there with the Wii. As you see here, there are a bunch of really interesting game releases for that system, including two Wario games. You have Wario Land Shake It, as well as WarioWare Smooth Moves. And then check it out. You have Endless Ocean Blue World, Battalion Wars 2. You have Donkey Kong Barrel Blast. Uh, of course, you would have a Super Smash Brothers Brawl and an Animal Crossing game. So again, something for everybody from Nintendo, and I don't even think I have them all. As you can see here, I have a couple sports games, but I have a question for you. Out of these five games, which one do you think is the most valuable as of today? Well, the answer really surprised me because it's actually Wii Sports. And I was blown away by this because isn't there millions of copies of Wii Sports out there? Like, <laughs> I don't understand why it's so valuable. It, it sells anywhere from 20 to $30 online. But it is a classic, and most people who want to get back into Wii collecting and playing their Wii, they're going to want a copy of that game. So I guess that's why it's somewhat collectible. All right, guys. Well, that is a quick look at my Nintendo Wii game collection. And as you can imagine, that is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many interesting games on this system. I could have made this video twice as long. But I would love to know from you guys what games you think I am missing and I should pick up for my Wii collection. Please post down below. Also, share some of your favorite Wii memories, some games that you remember playing on this system. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.